Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you are looking for a warm, helpful vermicomposting community, you are in the right place. Today, I'm going to teach you how to use worm castings in two different ways that can help you save hundreds of dollars over the course of your seed starting and also your up potting or even in your raised beds or in the ground beds. So first of all, let's look at the European night crawlers. Let's get some castings harvested and then we'll talk about all the ways that you can use it to save money. First of all, if you were watching last time and we basically took the second European night crawlers and put it in the same bed and it was completely heaped over. I did predict that it would go down by quite a bit, but I did not think it would go down by this much. It's actually below the level of the bin. So those little worms have been just working their heart outs, turning all of this uh, material into vermicompost. All right, so let me put you down and we'll start harvesting the castings and get going. First of all, I'm going to use a little bit of a tray here to catch the castings. And I'm just gonna scrape them off the top here. And any of them that are dry or dry-ish can uh, come and get sifted. I'll pick out anything that's uh, not going to uh, ever digest and I'll put the worms into the business end. So the goal of what we're doing today is to get some castings so that we can do two things. And I'll show you what percentages you need to use for both. The first thing that we can talk about is getting enough castings to make some worm tea. So making worm tea, what you're going to do is you are going to take the, the leftover powder like this, the castings themselves that are rich in all sorts of nutrients and also active biology that is really good at helping more microbes turn basically Okay, so one of the first things that you can do with your Roma compost is to make potting mix. Now, what I have right here is just ye old uh, rinsed and dried out coconut coir. And what I do is I put this in a ratio of 50% cocoa coir and 50% like vermiculite or perlite. Okay, and then when you have this 50% mixture of each of those, then by volume, you're gonna wanna put in probably about two or three handfuls of the vermicompost. You do not wanna get more than 20% of the vermicompost as in relationship to your inorganic constituents here. And then when you mix this together, what you have is some really awesome potting mix. Anything over that 20%, uh, according to the books that are in my Amazon links below, can inhibit um, some of your plant growth as well as seed development. The $20 bag of coconut coir, or the $20 brick of coconut coir and the $20 bag of vermiculite, that will last you and make probably 50 to 100 gallons of the potting mix. And then you will use about maybe one or two gallons of the uh, vermicompost. And then that is your ideal uh, mixture for potting up your plants once they have become seedlings. Okay, so now that we've done a little bit of a harvest, this is still a little bit damp. So we're not going to get 100% of all of the finished castings. I may have overdone it in trying to keep the moisture uh, high in this area just because the furnace is on and unfortunately the castings will dry out a lot. So what I want to do is make sure that above everything else, even if it's at sacrificing um, harvesting, I can always keep the worms healthy by keeping the moisture up. So if this was drier, I could get a larger harvest, but I did a pretty big harvest previously on a different bin, so I don't really need it. All right, so these guys are doing good. 
since we put the two bins together, they are still kind of all over the place, even in the castings that in theory should be pretty devoid. But that is to be expected when you combine two bins and uh, they have not quite all started to migrate to the, the finished food end. So we're just gonna make sure that we have given them some air move everybody down a little bit so that there is room to continue feeding these guys. I'll put a diagram up of the wedge system, but essentially all the old goes to that end, all the new goes to the uh, to the right side. And of course, if you're left-handed or right-handed, I suppose you can do it any way that makes sense. There's no rule on that. This is another reason I use coconut coir. All of the shredded paper kind of sticks to itself um, and makes it harder for the worms to get in it. Putting coconut coir in with shredded paper makes sure that the worms have something nice and fluffy to get in between. But sometimes when you're out, you're out, right? You just have to deal with it. So over time, I just kind of mix it up. Things happen. Nobody's perfect. So I'm just going to keep digging here and moving things over. And if I do manage to get some of the stuff in the place that I don't want it, It'll always sift out later if that's what happens. But I am trying to pick out the bigger stuff and put it towards the other end. But all of this, you know, completely compresses over time as it gets further and further worked down by the worms, which is why this kind of a system works. The, the volume of the men keeps decreasing as it makes worm castings. And then, assumedly, the carbon dioxide from the decomposition also comes off. So I'm starting to get down here a little deeper, and I am noticing that it is a little bit wet down here. Which is another reason to get in here and make sure that there's air. With this being an artificial ecosystem, it's not like the worms in normal soil or leaf litter. You know, whereas all of that stuff is normally acted upon by other creatures, it's just got me to help them out here. And since I want them to dig deep and, and get all my food eaten up here, I help them out and make sure they've got enough air so that they can stay healthy. All right, let's switch uh, directions here and look at the business end of this bin. Okay, so we'll see how much they've eaten. It's been a month now, and with twice as many worms, hopefully they did get enough food. Looks like, looks like they definitely got enough bedding in here, which can always be their food, you know, if there's not enough people scraps. European night crawlers do well eating both people food and just paper. So if you're a little light on the table scraps, then it's always fine to just give them shredded paper or cardboard. And uh, they will not have a problem with that. They will eat that just fine. You have to figure in the wild, all they're eating is leaves and whatever is fallen from the plants. So you know that they will do just fine if you just give them shredded paper and cardboard and very little people food. Looks like I'm seeing a lot of the bedding, but I'm not seeing a big pile of people food. So it's, it's possible that they've eaten just about everything. There's probably more than five pounds of worms in this system, so Whatever was easy for them to get at is probably what they ate. Let's see, looks like a couple of green tomatoes there. I'm really glad the moisture stayed well. The furnace has been on quite a bit in the last month, so that is one of my largest worries is that if I don't get down here to check on these guys, that they'll dry out, which is one of the larger risks you run into when you only feed every three or four weeks. 
So it looks like they are doing fine. Just kind of spread this out a little bit, put the couple of leftovers that they have, and there's not many. So we can give them some food, but probably not a very big feeding, simply because if there's food left over, you know they didn't go through it. So kind of should back off a little bit and let them catch up. The next thing you can do is put in about a pint of vermicompost into a gallon of water. Now you can just use this as is. You can just use this as is, or you can bubble it with a fish bubbler overnight to help expand all of the nutrients and the microbes that are in this uh, solution. Additionally, I also like to put in liquid kelp meal and molasses to get things really brewing. But if all you have is vermicompost, this is all you need. And your plants will thank you for it. So these guys have more than enough bedding here. So I'm not going to, to give them any more of the cardboard. And since there's not very much food left over, I think we're probably gonna just feed them about a gallon which is about half as much as I usually feed them. So what we have here, some lemons and limes and some leftover vegetable chili, some tea bags and some onions and some oranges, and looks like a cucumber. A little bit of, uh, this is a candy roaster squash. And that should keep this worm bin good for another three weeks since I had some food left over previously. So if you have any other questions about what kind of, what else you can do with worm castings, feel free to put your questions below. And these guys are gonna get covered back up again. But, so just the simple worm tea is the best thing that you can do quickly. If you don't have a lot of time or you don't have other resources, it works very well as a fuller feed as well as for feeding the soil microbes. And then also the 20% worm castings is probably the best thing that I've ever used it for. It helps have very strong, healthy plants that develop strong roots. And if you're interested in looking at any of those books, I do have links below where you can get them from my Amazon store in Kindle or hard copy. And then you can read for it yourself and see a little bit more of the technical background. If you're interested in more of the European Nightcrawlers, I will put the playlist right over there. And if you wanna hear more about the worm tea and the worm castings and how I help feed the biologicals, I will put that playlist right over here. Okay guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.